Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, I'm Martin Anisman, president of Damon College, and I'd like to welcome everyone to the Research and Information Commons for this uh, special event with New York U.S. Senator uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, to whom we expend a, a special welcome to Damon College. We're pleased to have the opportunity to host this event and welcome the senator here. I'd like to take one moment to recognize three individuals who are here with us today. We have a great board of trustees, and the chair of our board is out there somewhere, Caroline Hasselberg. Caroline, nice to have you here. The vice chair of our board, Tom Bridges, is straight ahead. I appreciate that. And another board member, uh, Jed Dietrich. Where's Jed? Is out there. We appreciate you, you coming uh, to be with us today. It's important for us to recognize that the Damon College environment is one that is supportive of veterans' needs. We have this year established the Damon College Center for Veterans and Veteran Family Services Office designated to be a comprehensive program to provide aid and assistance to veterans seeking a degree from Damon. We're pleased that Patrick Welch, uh, PhD and Sergeant in the U.S. Marine Corps, uh, retired, uh, has accepted our offer to be the director of the center. Patrick was most recently director of the Erie County Veteran Service, uh, uh, Service Agency comes from a family of military veterans and was awarded a Purple Heart for his combat service in Vietnam. Kirsten Gillibrand, who is, I think most of you know right next to me, uh, if, if you're not, you came to the wrong place, was sworn in as New York Senator in January 2009, filling the seat of the current Secretary of State, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Prior to that appointment, uh, Senator Gillibrand served in the United States, House, State, uh, United States House of Representatives, representing New York's 20th Congressional District, which spans across 10 counties in upstate New York. Senator Gillibrand has been committed to open and honest government during her time in office. When she was first elected, she pledged to bring unprecedented transparency and access to her post, and she did, becoming the first member of Congress to post her official public schedule, her personal financial disclosure, and her federal earmark requests online. In the Senate, she has uh, worked to rebuild the American economy by creating uh, good paying jobs, help, helping small businesses get loans, and partnering with the private sector to foster innovation and entrepreneurship. Her legislative agenda also aims to help middle classes and working families by providing uh, quality child care and improving education and health care for children and keeping our neighborhoods safe. She sits on four committees, Environment and Public Works, Agriculture, Aging, and Foreign Relations. She was born and raised in upstate New York. She now lives in Hudson, New York, with her husband Jonathan and her two young sons, six-year Theodore and two-year-old Henry. She's also uh, helping us to get our uh, newly founded agency funded that Patrick had, and we appreciate her help in that. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. I want to thank President uh, Anisman for your leadership, your dedication, your commitment not only to education but to this community and to our state. You really make an extraordinary difference in preparing our workforce and preparing our young people to be tomorrow's leaders. So thank you for that very much. I want to thank Dr. Patrick Welsh, our director, for his vision, his service, uh, his extraordinary commitment uh, to making sure our young veterans have every opportunity to be successful. Thank you for, for that. And I want to recognize our Amherst Town Supervisor, Barry Weinstein, for coming. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate your service and your dedication uh, to helping our communities. It makes a big difference. What we're here to talk about today is a simple piece of legislation that I think will make a difference. Uh, we have a very tough economy right now. No matter where you travel all across the state, the number one issue on anyone's mind right now is jobs and the fact that too many families are struggling. Middle class families are struggling to make ends meet. Small businesses don't have access to lending. And lots of New Yorkers are out of work and are worried about how they're going to provide for their families, for their children or their aging parents. And that's really the most important issue that we as representatives struggle with every day. And one of the groups that has some of the highest unemployment, unfortunately, is our veterans, particularly our young veterans. Uh, our young veterans under 30 years old across New York have about a 20% unemployment rate. That means one in five young veterans are out of work right now. That's more than seven, and, and for all veterans, they have an unemployment rate of about 7%. Nearly 900 veterans under the age of 30 in Western New York currently are unemployed. So these are huge issues for our men and women. And for the men and women who serve this country, 
They've given everything. They've given everything we ask of them. Dedication, service, sacrifice. They've given their courage. They've given their ultimate effort to make a difference for our nation. And the least we can do is when they come home, we should make sure they have the jobs available to provide for their families. And that means being eligible and be able to access a good education so they can be trained for the jobs of today. Since World War II, we have had the GI Bill, and the GI Bill made an extraordinary difference for a whole generation of veterans uh, to be able to get a college degree, and it really spurred economic growth in the years following World War II because of that generation, our greatest generation. And so what we want to do is make sure the GI Bill is still the bill that will make a difference for veterans coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan to be educated and to be ready to be the workforce uh, for our current uh, growing economy, uh, for the industries that are growing. So what this bill is going to do is called the Post-9-11 Veterans Education Assistance Act. First, it ensures that every member of the military, including the National Guard and Reserve members, have access to all the educational opportunities that they've earned. Specifically, the legislation will allow active duty service members who have been activated by governors to respond to natural disasters or other emergencies to be covered by the GI benefits, benefits that nearly 30,000 National Guard members currently don't have access to. Additionally, the legislation improves some of the tuition benefits to cover the full cost of an education at any four-year public institution, making it easier for veterans to take advantage of this benefit. So for a private college, what it allows is up to $20,000 to go for tuition, and for any state school, all tuition is covered, uh, and that will, is included under the $20,000 cap. The legislation will also improve GI benefits to allow veterans to take advantage of online learning opportunities and apprenticeship training programs so that the veterans can get the on-the-job training they need and actually be able to access more professions and more jobs. Next, the legislation will also provide active duty personnel with the same benefits to cover the cost of books and the cover of the, cover of the cost of licensing and certification exams. Uh, currently, they're only eligible for one exam. There's many certifications that would be very helpful for veterans to have access to, again, to open up the job market to our veterans so they have more choices. Lastly, the legislation will allow veterans to give these benefits to a family member once they come home. And so if it's better for their family for a spouse to be educated or a child to be educated under the GI Bill, that makes a huge difference and that, that eligibility is good for 15 years. So I think that will help a lot of our veteran families have the resources that they need to get a good big job, to provide for their families, to be able to provide for the needs they have. Uh, because again, when these men and women sacrifice so much for us, the least we can do is give them the tools they need to provide for their families when they come home. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Patrick Welch, who's the director of the Damon College Center for Veterans and Veteran Family Services, retired United States Marine Corps Sergeant and Purple Heart recipient. It's been a long time since I've pinned a lady, but what I'd like to do is give the senator one of the buttons that we in the Buffalo Veterans Court and Vietnam Veterans of America wear very proudly. It's leave no veteran behind. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Some of you know it, some of you don't. I need to know you've got blood flowing through your veins and you've got a set of vocal cords. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Much better. Thank you very much. <laughs> Senator Gillibrand, welcome to Damon College and welcome to the Center for Veterans and Veteran Family Services. And on behalf of all of our veteran students, many of whom are here today, the veterans in our community, and all of our community, thank you very much for your continuing support for veterans legislation that provides for the proper mental, physical, and educational care for those who have borne the brunt of battle and their families. The post-9-11 GI Bill is the best educational benefit provided to veterans since World War II. And I think it's interesting, I think the Senator and I have the same speechwriter, uh, because this legislation, S-3447, is going to make up for a lot of the deficiencies in the original bill. Senators listed several of the points. I want to mention two that I think are specifically important for our community. First of all, the expansion of benefits to the Guard and Reserve. We've got approximately 6,600 Guard and Reserve members in this community many of whom may not have qualified 
for the post 9-11 GI Bill. This legislation will now provide for more of them to be eligible. And the second part is the transfer of benefits. Uh, this enhancement will allow more of our service members who don't need the college education to transfer those benefits to their spouses and to their children. The end of World War II, eight million veterans returned and went to college and proceeded to build the largest and greatest economic and military power the world has ever seen. We must now look to our new greatest generation, bring them home, get an education for them, and help recreate the vision, the vigor, and the vitality so that they can be the future leaders of our country. Higher education in this community has got an economic impact of about $3.2 billion annually and employs about 32,000 people. It's our goal at Damon College and many of the other colleges to make Western New York a national destination for excellence in veterans education. This legislation will help advance that goal. Thank you, Senator Gillibrand, for taking the lead on this legislation as you did in the House and being a co-sponsor. And for all of you out there, a few closing words. Remember that freedom is not free because it has been bought and paid for with the sweat, the tears, the blood, and the lives of 1.2 million Americans buried in cemeteries all over the world. Thank you, Senator. Thank you all. I'd now like to introduce Amherst Town Supervisor Barry Weinstein. Thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing me to share the podium and share your news conference. Uh, welcome to Amherst. Uh, Amherst is the safest town in the country. Uh, Money Magazine, uh, CNN Money Magazine picked us as one of the best places to live. Uh, we're 42nd on the national list and first or second on the state list. Uh, thank you for helping veterans. This is very important to us. Amherst is competing for a veteran cemetery, as are some other communities in this area. Uh, it's important that we get the uh, designation for the area. I realize that you're uh, representing all the other communities besides Amherst, but I just wanted you to know that uh, it's important for the area to get designated uh, the cemetery. Uh, <laughs> We have a wastewater treatment plant. It was built in the 70s with federal and state money, and it has reached its natural life. Uh, we are replacing it one broken piece at a time. We need help, preferably other people's money. <laughs> it would be good for the economy, the local economy, the national economy, to, to repair and replace this type of in infrastructure. It would be good for the environment to make sure that we can modernize our facility and not have the, uh, the surges of waste into our creeks and streams. And uh, for this, I ask you to give some consideration. Uh, I'm sure that Amherst's plight is all over the country. And that, uh, I thank you very much. to introduce uh, Marlene Roll from Desert Storm Vet. She's the director of Erie County Veteran <coughs> Services. Marlene. Thank you for your invitation up here. I appreciate it. I am a veteran. I'm very excited about this bill, and I'm very excited about it for our veterans that will be returning. As you know, we have several of them coming and going all the time. Um, I see them on a daily basis. And I work with them, trying to get them their benefits. Education is very important. Uh, we, we really try to work hard. We've been working in our communities through our colleges, getting veterans advocates in the schools. So this is just a, a big plus for us. We, we really, we really need this. Uh, for our veterans out there, please take advantage of your benefits. 
come see us. We are willing to help at any time. And uh, it is what you are due. I think it's my one thing. Thank you so much. Students want to speak, but maybe you could at least come up and introduce yourself. We have two students here: Eric Truesdale, Damon student and Navy veteran, and Andy Finty, a student Navy veteran. Are either of you here that want to share your story, perhaps? No, too shy. Come on in. No. Andy's coming. Oh, Andy. in Chicago, Illinois. I uh, did six years in the Navy as a corpsman. We used to tease the Marines by saying that we were their few good men. Very <laughs> uh, good. <laughs> I spent um, back and forth from Great Lakes to San Diego a couple of years. You know, I did about a year on a ship, USS John Paul Jones. Um, and I finished my career in uh, Okinawa, Japan, which was a Marine Corps base, as well as the Kadena Air Force Base as well. Um, I got out, came here to Buffalo. And, um, this is like my second go-round. I, I was a, a nurse uh, for a while, and now I'm back here for social work. So, um, you know, I'm, I've been working with Pat to kind of like hold the fort down, you know, off and on, at least until he came aboard. So, you know, um, trying to work with him. Um, I guess that's about it, you know. I'm, I'm grateful to the uh, opportunity to be here at Dana. Um, I had transferred from another institution, uh, but I feel right at home here. So, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity to be here. in the Veterans Committee in the Senate, and we're hoping to be able to get a vote on it when we come back in the session. Because fundamentally, this is a jobs bill. This is about enhancing opportunity for veterans so they can get jobs, so we can reduce the unemployment rate and get our economy moving again. Because you know our veterans are some of our best and brightest men and women who have extraordinary courage, talent, and commitment. And they can be such a force for growth in the economy through their own entrepreneurialism and innovative spirits. They can really drive job creation, particularly if they're veteran-owned businesses. So we want to facilitate that by making sure they have all the education they need to start those businesses and to create those job opportunities. We can do off, off topic separate. Any else on topic? Yes. Is there a companion bill in the house? Yes, there is. Uh, we can look it up for you. We'll look it up for you. But yes. Anything else? All right. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you.